So we had a look at some of the JavaScript basics and what prototype pollution is. So let's quickly summarize what we did in the last video. Okay, so let's create an empty object named obj and uh, let's try to access its proto property. So we are expecting to get some kind of object with some properties and values. So let's find out what is the constructor function which was used to create this obj object. So to do that, we can access the constructor property and we find that uh, the constructor function which used to create, which is used to create this obj object is called ob object itself, which is object with an uppercase O. So uh, this means that uh, when we try to access the proto property of this obj, uh, we are basically trying to access its constructors prototype, which is objects prototype. So, which means that this is equivalent to obj dot underscore underscore proto. And uh, that's why when we try to add a new property to this obj objects proto, it would be added to the objects prototype, which means that if I add this test property here, it would also be available in the objects prototype, as you can see. So, similarly, now we have added this property to the top of the prototype inheritance chain and which means that this property test would be available in the all the objects that we create or maybe which are already existing. So let's create a new object and check it ourselves. So we created this new object obj2 and let's try to access this test property on this obj2. As you can see that this is accessible even though it didn't have any kind of such property because of the prototype chain inheritance. Let's get back to the example that we saw in the last video's intro. And so prototype pollution could be found in places where our user input is treated as an object and it is cloned or copied or merged to another object. So let's see what the merge function in our example does. So we have got a source object here, which is going to come from a user input. And then there is a target object, which is an empty object, but still it would have the proto property or this underscore underscore proto underscore underscore property uh, which exists by default and which we talked a lot about in the last video. The merge function here basically is going to loop over all the properties in the source object, which is this. And it is going to copy all the properties and the values of the source object into the target object. Uh, but in case the properties value is an, is an object itself, which is a nested object, then we are going to end up somewhere here, uh, which is recursively going to call this merge function again. And in this recursion, we are basically going to copy over all the properties and their values of that nested object into the target again. So all of this might make some more sense as we move further with the process. So when the loop starts, uh, we are going to come across this name property in the first iteration. And uh, we are going to copy this name property with the value orange in the, into the target object. And similarly, the next in the next iteration, we are going to copy over this email property, then the ID, and so on. Now suppose an attacker adds this property underscore underscore proto uh, underscore underscore in the source input with its value as an object which have this property is admin true. And now what would happen is when the loop comes to this uh, proto property, since it is an object and also the proto property which exists by default in the target object is also an object, we would satisfy this if condition and we would end up uh, in this if block. So we are then going to recursively call this merge function. And in this uh, merge function, we are going to copy over all the properties of this nested object uh, into the targets proto object. So what would happen is that simply our is admin property with the value true would be copied to the proto of target object. And therefore, uh, adding this proto property to an object would simply pollute that prototype chain. And this is admin property is now going to be available to all the objects that already exist or newly created. So now that we know that operations similar to merge, copy, or clone, which are used to modify properties of an object, can cause prototype pollution if the source object is user controlled. So this source object in which we in injected this proto property is actually going to come as a part of request body. And this whole request body is actually going to be treated as a string by the server. So we need to convert it into a JavaScript object. So first of all, we need to pass the string as JSON. So for that, we are going to use json.pass method, 
to convert it into a JavaScript object. So now the quirk with JSON.pass is that all the properties which are inside the pass JSON, that is pass body, for example, here would be considered as its own property. So even though we have this proto property in the request body, after passing it, it is not going to override the original proto, which exists by default. But instead, it is going to create it as its own property, such that it would have now two proto properties. And that's the reason our source object itself doesn't pollute the prototype chain, but instead prototype pollution occurs when we are copying over this source object's own proto property to a target object. So now we are familiar with the concept. Let's try to see how this actually works with an example vulnerable application. So we have got this application by this user Kirill here on GitHub to demonstrate prototype pollution. So let's quickly clone this and walk through it. Okay, so we have got this very simple express list application here, which is a simple chat API and it imports two modules. Uh, one is body parser, which is used to parse HTTP request bodies. And then we have got this load as module, which we would see actually why it is being used here. Uh, then we have got this array, which is called users, which stores uh, user objects. So basically it has got two user objects. Uh, one is normal user, which consists of two properties, name and password. And we have got this admin user object here, which has also one special property, which is called can delete, and it is set to true. And finally, we have an array of messages. So uh, then we are basically using the JSON parser of this body parser module. Uh, and this behaves exactly similar to what JSON.parse behaves. So it is not going to pollute its own prototype, uh, just as we discussed. And we have got these three HTTP requests here. So there are three routes. Uh, the get, get route is basically used to retrieve all the messages which are present in this messages array. So it is basically going to push or uh, add uh, the message that we want to add in this messages array, which is present here. And finally, we have got this uh, delete route here, which is used to delete messages based on a message identifier. And uh, given that the user is authenticated, which means his password and username combination is correct. And also it has a requir requirement of this scan delete property. So as we saw that this property was available to the admin or user object, but uh, not the normal user object. So let's actually look at uh, the HTTP request uh, in buff suit. And before that, uh, make sure to start your server, which is uh, by installing all the modules which are within the package.json file and then simply starting the server. So it would listen on port 3000. So this is the get request, which is used to retrieve all the messages. And initially, since this messages array here is empty, the response of this request is also an empty array. Then we have got this uh, request to add message, which is this put route here. And uh, we are trying to authenticate here using this auth property, which is an object in itself, uh, where we provide the name and password. And finally, we have got this message property, which is also uh, an object, uh, it contains a property text and this value here. So let's see what happens when we uh, make this request. So as you can see that the response seems successful. And uh, let's look at uh, what all messages are present in the get request. So as you can see that our uh, text property in the message property, which was an object was added here in this uh, message array, which is messages array actually. So now let's say if this text property is something which is, uh, you know, specific to this um, property, or it could it would simply accept any kind of property with any name. So let's see if we do something like this. What happens? Okay, so the response seems to be successful again. Let's uh, look at all the messages. Okay, so as you can see that this property was also added regardless of the name. So uh, most probably it doesn't care about the type of this. A message property. Okay, so now let's try to delete the messages that we have created. So let's try to, you know, take this message identifier, which is identified by this ID one uh, to let's try to delete this message. So if I do something like this, most probably as expected, we are going to get access denied because this can delete property was not set on our user object. It was only set on this admin user object whose password we actually don't know because it is being set at the runtime. 
So let's uh, dig into the source code again and uh, check what uh, the add message request actually does. So if you look carefully here, you would find that this uh, merge method is being used to add your message which you pass in your request body to this message uh, object here. So it is trying to merge your message uh, property which you send as, a, as an object in the request body to this message object. And so this merge function is actually similarly vulnerable to the merge function that we earlier discussed. So which means that uh, we could pass in some properties in this message uh, property, which is um, also an object. Like as you can see that when we passed in this object as message properties value, it was added. So let's try to pollute this message uh, object, message properties value, which is an object. And uh, let's see that if we could somehow pollute the uh, prototype chain. So simply add this underscore underscore proto property here and inside it add another property which says can delete. And let's set it to true. So let's try adding this. Okay, so the response is again successful. And you can see that uh, this was added again with the identifier three, but you can see that there was no proto property set, uh, which which is visible in the uh, messages array. Uh, but let's try to delete this uh, any of the message now. So let's see if if we still get access denied or not. And as you can see that our object was successfully polluted. And since we have polluted this uh, topmost uh, prototype chain, uh, this can delete property is going to be available to all the objects which means including our own user object. And that's why uh, the condition of uh, having this can delete property on your user was satisfied and we were able to successfully delete messages, which we were not able to delete earlier. So let's see what happens actually under the hood. So quickly, let's set up uh, our debugger. So if you go here and select node.js here, uh, you would have your debugger set up. So um, let's quickly debug this line where we are actually pushing this message to this messages array. And um, if we quickly go back here, uh, we would see that our uh, all the messages are gone because we just restarted the server. And uh, when we try to add this uh, message, let's see what happens. So as you can see, this is what our message, which is going to be added on the messages array uh, here looks like. And you can see that it also have this proto property, which exists by default. But if we expand it, you can see that our own can delete property is now added to the uh, topmost chain, which is actually the object's prototype. So we have got this can delete property available everywhere now. So let's quickly have a look at the debug console. So let me open a new terminal here and go to the, go to the debug console. And now if I try to create a new object, let's say X here, and as you can see that now the, this can delete property is going to be available to this object as well because this was now globally uh, set on the object's prototype which means that it is going to be available on all the properties so now let's again uh, set up breakpoint uh, on this uh, delete route here and uh, let's uh, let's see if this can delete property on this user object actually exists uh, since user object is most likely going to exist because we are uh, authenticating with correct credentials. So let's have a look. So if I continue or resume the execution, uh, let's look at this delete request here. So we have got this message here. We have got this identifier ID one. If I try to delete this message, okay, we are into the debugger. And as you can see that this condition, as you can see, it says that it is true, which means that we are not we are never going to end uh, up in this if lock so let's step over uh, the execution flow and we could see that we didn't end up uh, inside this if lock otherwise we would have returned out of this uh, callback function uh, and but instead we uh, went outside this if lock which is uh, this uh, filter which is actually going to remove uh, this message with id1 from the messages array the fix for this vulnerability was actually applied by blacklisting the proto property. Uh, but as we know that uh, from the earlier videos that instead of proto property, we could also refer it via the constructor's prototype, which is constructor.prototype. 
and therefore it was possible to bypass that fix by having a constructor property which in turn have a prototype property and which would have a property that we actually want to pollute so in this case it would have been can delete and we would still have been able to delete uh, user messages so that was about prototype pollution in load as merge function okay so do let us know in the comments if you would like us covering a recent real world example on this prototype pollution and a very huge thanks to stock for a shout out in his bounty thursdays episode and see you guys again in the next video